Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Crushed Pixel doing stuff on YouTube. I know it is a it is a very rare occurrence, but I decided that I want to go ahead and make a camera studio plugin the proper way. Uh, first of all, hello to everybody who's here. It's not that many viewers, but that's okay, because I mean, whether I'm going to code this uh, live or whether I'm going to code this in my own time doesn't really make a difference to me. And I'm going to use this as an opportunity to uh, preach the gospel of Kotlin because uh, we're not going to be coding this in Java today. We are going to be programming the ultimate camera studio plugin in Gradle. Well, hello to everybody in chat. Hello, uh, Frisk. My name is not Marcus, I'm Marius. I hope that was autocorrect, but you shall be forgiven, my old friend. All right. So let me go through, um, let me go through what we're going to make today real quick. We're going to be making a plugin that is uh, very much uh, like the pretty popular camera studio mod that used to exist in the, I think it was before Minecraft 1.8. I'm not sure if that was beta 1.8. Um, but basically it allows you to set cam uh, camera points in your world and then have a smooth uh, fly over through them and that's precisely what we're going to be doing as a bucket plugin today uh, I previously created the CP camera studio plugin CP standing for crush pixel. That's me moi. However, it only teleported the player uh, 20 times a second because that's how how often you can realistically send packets out to the client That's the tick frequency of Minecraft um, so it was kind of jaggy. Basically, it was a cinematic with uh, 20 FPS. Today, we're going to be making the ultimate camera studio plugin. So obviously, it's going to be much nicer. Um, we are going to try uh, creating a fake player that is invisible and have our player spectate it. Because when you are spectating somebody, there is uh, interpolation on the client side. Uh, alternatively, we can also try mounting the player onto an armor stand or or, a, or, a, or an effect cloud and teleporting him like that. We're going to see what works best because there are up and downsides to each of the approaches. Um, all right, so I have already uh, set up a little bit here, um, done some preparation. I'm using the Spigot plugin template um i forgot who it was by let me actually let me actually check real quick because i want to give credit where credit is due i'm going to show you here this whole plugin is going to be open source and Silthus. Silthus is the great fella whose uh, spigot plugin template i'm using here because it has a, a bunch of stuff not all of which i'm going to be using uh, however, it just allowed me to get all of the boilerplate out of the way and I've already done some adjustments such as using Kotlin for writing. I'm going to be explaining quite a bit uh, on what I'm doing today. So even if you're not that familiar with Kotlin or programming in general, I hope that there is going to be something um, for you guys as well. I have also added the cloud command framework which was developed by my friend uh, City uh, at Incendo. You absolutely have to check it out. Uh, it's, it's, it's hands down the only properly usable command framework for Minecraft, for Spigot. So yeah, there it is. Go check it out uh, if, you, if you haven't. It's, I don't know. My recommendation, don't use anything else. So. I don't think that we need any other dependencies today. Maybe we're going to be using uh, perhaps MC protocol lib or protocol lib to send out some packets to the client. If we're going to do packet manipulation to spawn uh, fake entities such as a fake player, but we're going to be seeing about that later. I didn't think about that too much. Um, Classics is asking, so is this plugin going to be able to record just packet replays without movement? No, this has nothing to do with uh, recording packets or uh, the replay mod or anything. This is literally just 
making you go through the world smoothly and yeah uh you're, you're gonna see actually let me let me give you a let me give you a, a small demonstration of the old camera studio i don't think you can hear the audio because i didn't explicitly enable it but yeah basically you're able to uh, enter a bunch of commands set yeah set a bunch of points and this is where the points are and then when you do hold on where 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 am i showing it where am i showing it this is it you create the points you fly through it it's awesome for cinematics uh but uh, this one uh, uh, damn this is only linear interpolation man like it's going from point to point to point without any smooth curving so what we're going to be doing today is going to be uh a little bit nicer we're going to be using catmull rum spline interpolation or cubic interpolation i think catmull rum spline interpolation is just uh, a variant of uh, cubic interpolation so yeah this is a great website uh, paul bork he has so many awesome resources on stuff that interests me and probably others as well he also has stuff on equirectangular projection which was really really helpful when we were making uh, the replay mod which supports as you know 360 degree rendering using equirectangular projection but yeah, basically, you you guys, you all know linear interpolation. You put in two numbers, and then you say uh, at what point between those two numbers you want to get the value. So let's say I have a number uh, two and a number five, and um, I want the value at point zero point five. So in the middle, that would be uh, uh, ooh, three point five exactly. It would be three point five. Um, however, we're not going to be doing linear interpolation because as you can see, jagged lines, we want the smoothness. So yeah, we're going to be using uh, cubic interpolation or actually this variant of it, which is uh, Catmull rom spline interpolation. And as you can see, even in 3D space, it gives you super smooth paths. So that's, uh, that's the, that's the theory. Um, I hope this interests you. You can at any time ask questions in the chat. I got chat on my second monitor. So, yeah. I've already um, uh, made sure that we can start a Minecraft server from our IntelliJ. I'm using IntelliJ IDE for programming because it's, yeah, it's the only, it's the only reasonable choice for an IDE when you're doing anything JVM related. Don't, don't use Eclipse, guys. Don't, don't do it. I tried it started out with it till it is much better so um yeah i've been messing around here a bit uh, a little bit we want an annotation parser however i had to add the uh cloud annotations dependency for that and i've set it up so that uh, whenever i hit save in my uh, ide it just auto formats because um uh, i don't need to think about any formatting like that especially because i'm using an opinionated formatter called ktfmt for each, for like for every code that you have, there's only one correct way of formatting it with KTFMT, which eliminates any, uh, I don't know, discussion about code style, I guess. Um, so let's see. Um, I was following the tutorial that uh, City wrote about cloud. No, wait. It's always hard to find the and the documentation um, but we can actually get back to this part later maybe i'm even just going to be using the builder pattern and give that a try um, you can you can use uh, annotations and uh, a builder in order to um, declare your commands with cloud uh, city himself prefers using the builder i'm the kind of guy who just really likes annotations for some reason so that's what i've been using before um, but yeah we're going to uh, start with the interesting part, all right, uh, which is the actual interpolation. 
So basically, uh, to explain the theory to you, um, you know the linear interpolation uh, in order to get uh, the like a line between two points, a straight line. Um, however, uh, we're going to be using this one and you can simply uh, apply this interpolation independently to each of the uh, axes on the camera path. So the X, Y and Z axes, uh, you're going to apply the interpolation to all three of them. And this is how it's going to be looking like. This interpolation I use for the first time in the replay mod, I think. However, uh, I've been I've been come to love it and uh, I've reused it many more times ever since. So let's add a new package for interpolation. And I kind of like abstracting things away. So we're going to be starting out with an interface called interpolation, which allows us to um, just interpolate between two values. So let me think about that. It could be that I'm a, I'm a bit rusty. I haven't written a single line of code in two months uh, because I'm I just wanted to take some take some time off, which means it's been a while since I've written code. So uh, apologize, please. There's any rustiness, I guess, any stupid stuff I'm doing. But basically, um, we're going to be writing an interpolation interface, which only has a single uh, function, which gives us the value at a given point uh, on that interpolation. And then let's just uh, actually write uh, an implementation on that for linear interpolation, first of all. You all know uh, linear interpolation, A plus B minus A times position. That's it. You take the you take the start, um, and then you multiply the um, length of the or, or the difference between the two points with the position, and that's going to give you some fun linear interpolation. Now, usually, I would write some uh, KDoc here or Java doc if I was writing Java code. By the way, uh, I've kind of sworn to myself that I'm never going to be writing any Java code again, because mm, Kotlin is just so much nicer and there's no going back for me. It has one downside, which is uh, that you have to shade the Kotlin runtime into the plugin, which means that because otherwise you won't be able to use the Kotlin uh, standard library functions uh, in your plugin at runtime, um, which you obviously need to do. Um, so the plugin file size is going to be larger than that of a pure Java plugin. But that's uh, a sacrifice that I'm willing to make because at the end of the day, it's not even really a sacrifice on my end. Like it's just, you just got to download a, a couple megs extra. Uh, I've been warned that this may make it more tricky to sell this on the Spigot marketplace uh, because my plan is to sell this for a low sum on the Spigot marketplace. Um, but even if not, like I, I'm, I'm not that fussed about the money anyway and the whole plugin is going to be uh, open source so yeah actually let me uh, make a tweet real quick where i announce uh, that i'm live on, uh, on on twitter hold on i i forgot to do that before i started the stream um let me uh let me <laughs> i'm going to let you take some part here I don't know. I'm not that I'm not that good at like advertisement tweets and stuff like that. So 
uh, <laughs> uh, one second. Where do I find the link to my to my own uh, to my own stream? I think some of you guys probably ah yeah here we go. I, I posted it before, so I'm just gonna be posting it again here. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's go. All right. So. Um, yeah, now we got linear interpolation here. Um, what Frisk says, by the way, uh, and, and Bella, Rust, great language, great language. Kotlin and Rust are the two languages that I really, really like. Um, I haven't really given Rust a, a proper try yet, uh, only checked out the docs, but uh, the, because the problem is that I, when I'm doing C++ coding or like anything where Rust would be a suitable alternative, um, there are no real frameworks because I like to do audio DSP, audio programming, and um, the biggest framework there, which is Juice, J-U-C-E, that's C++. So it's not really possible to use Rust for that, but one day, one day, I'm going to be using Rust and never, never look back. Similarly to how I switched to Kotlin and never look back. All right. So, um... Yeah, to create an instance of the linear interpolation, all you got to do is uh, give the start and the end point. You can actually call it call it that just to be a little bit more uh, explicit, I guess. Uh, and then uh, next, we're going to be making the Ketmol rom spline interpolation. Now, there is something special about this interpolation because while for linear interpolation, it is sufficient to have the starting and the start and the end point for uh, Ketmo rom spline interpolation or like some of these, um, you need actually four points. Um, so if you want to interpolate between, let's say this, or actually, yeah. If you want to interpolate between this and this point, you also need to supply it the previous and the subsequent point because it needs it to know how it curves into the point. So uh, instead of just uh, supplying the start and the end point, we're going to be supplying P0, which is the previous point, P1, which is the first point, P2, which is the second point, and P3, which is the point that comes after the second point, but that's not actually even being interpolated. All right, so let's see. This is the part where we just yoink somebody else's work because I mean, why, why, why not? Um, I'm going to start with the cubic interpolation. Let me just uh, put this on my second screen so that I can copy it uh, from here because I got to translate it into uh, Kotlin, obviously, because I think this is uh, C or C++ pseudocode. I don't know. Um, Mm, right, actually, this, uh, oh no, never mind. I thought I did something stupid, but I didn't. All right, so this should be it. This should give us some nice Ketmol. Uh, actually, this gives us cubic interpolation uh, for Ketmol rom spline interpolation. Uh, as you can see, hold on, let me actually put it on your screen. Let me put it on your on your screen so that you so that I can show. Uh, yeah, for as you see for uh, 
Catmull ROM span interpolation, you're going to be needing some slightly modified maths. So that's just what we're going to be doing. All right. So what they call Y0 here, uh, I call P0, because I think point makes, makes more sense for some reason. Um, and what they call M, U is what I call position, like the relative position that you want to interpolate. If you have any questions about this, by the way, please don't hesitate to ask. I really, really like uh, teaching people and explaining this kind of stuff because I'm really passionate about it, right? I'm just double checking. At this point, I should have probably just copy pasted and replaced the variable names with a find and replace, but mm, eh, whatever. All right, but yeah, the rest is the rest is still the same. Let me actually just close my window real quick because there's some noise coming from the outside. Much better, much better. All right. So uh yeah now we got now we got our interpolation i also implemented the linear interpolation as you can see uh so that we can um so that we can just switch it later like if somebody wants to do linear interpolation for a path there may be valid reasons for that um yeah we're going to be using that later all right so now um we need to create the concept of a path uh, a path consists out of multiple points and there are multiple segments uh, on the path um, one segment between each uh, pair of points I guess so um, let's just start with a new package called path and create a path segment class If I'm talking slowly, it means that I'm thinking while I'm doing it. Um, what do we need for the path segment? We're going to be using bucket vectors. Or are we? Uh, bucket vectors are terrible because they are mutable objects. And mm, you really don't want to have your object like data structures like that uh, mutable. What that means in practice, I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to, I'm going to teach that to you. This is going to be a stream where I'm going to be ex just explaining a bunch of stuff that could be interesting to you guys. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm just gonna create a, a, a test function real quick to show it to you. Um, if you do, um, Something like this. If you if you just try to add something uh, to a vector, um, it returns the modified vector. But what it actually also does is is it modifies the object itself. So so zero is now different than it was before. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's not that's, that's not that great. I'm going I'm to going to be making a path segment, path segment because, because uh, it's, it is it is easier to do to do a path 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 and then the third one uh, comes a bit further behind, then, uh, yeah, you won't be able to... Uh... Hold on one second. Okay, yeah, my brother is actually watching the stream and he's telling me that the voice uh, is broken. Let me just monitor that real quick. Let me just monitor that real quick. Uh... 
I'm sorry. I'm going. I'm. I'm. I'm going to show it to you here on on my OBS. Uh, what I'm doing. Forgive me. This is a new setup. Um, I haven't really tried this microphone on before, uh, or tried it out. Hold on. Where do I find this? Nope. Uh, I probably can only do it when I stop streaming. All right. This is most likely going to sound like ass now. Oh, it's it's good now. It's fixed. Okay, wait. I'm going to switch it back then. I'm going to switch it back. Is it... Is it okay? Is it okay? Is it okay now? <laughs> Just please let me know in chat if it's if it's broken again. Does it does it work? Is it good? Yes? Yes? Is, is it all right? I'm just gonna carry on then. Ah, thanks guys. Thanks guys. Awesome. Amazing. Good. So basically, yeah, mutable versus immutable data types. The vector is immutable data type, which means if you do functions on it, it changes its internal state. Um, and that's a huge no go in my in my opinion um never create your data types like that unless they're like super large you need to do a lot of um calculations with it i guess but you usually the overhead of creating a new uh, instance wouldn't be uh wouldn't kill you so make your stuff immutable what it would look like if it was um immute uh, if it was immutable it would just return a new instance instead of itself with the values modified instead of modifying the values here. Yes, Oscar, I'm using a proper framework. Um, this is the, like this framework is actually why I hired uh, City um, at the Knox crew, just because amazing stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, that's all I can say. It's, it's so good. Anyway, we're going to be using buckets vectors here. But I don't feel like adding a new vector type just for this. Anyway, um, so, what did I call it here? Ah, uh, let's call it value, it was value at. So, as I explained earlier, um, we are only going to be, uh, we're simply going to be interpolating each of the axes separately. So, here's what we're going to be doing. Mm. I need to think real quick. Maybe I'm just going to pass it the interpolations instead. Yep, that's what I'll be doing. Right, there has to be a location, of course, because we also need a rotation. This is probably not going to work because I need to... Uh, 
Actually, let me just have it. Let's just make it give us the world as well. So that we can construct the location from it. Yeah, now we got to cast that to a, to a flow. Great. So basically, um, okay. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for the info, uh, Frisk. I don't know. Like I, I, I just took an hour before I, I set this up to, to get the setup done. Felt all right, but yeah, now you ruined it for the whole chat. Good job. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm with my family and it's possible that people are trying to come into the room. That's why I locked it, but it's like, you know, when you're living with a big family, it's kind of difficult to, to tell them to just leave you alone for some time because, yeah, people don't listen. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm only visiting. Uh, usually I live in the UK at the moment and I'm back home in Germany now. But yeah, so now we get a get a path segment uh, class here. Um, I'm not 100% sure about the architecture of this yet, but we're going to be seeing. By the way, this stream is only going to be going on for um, at most two and a half more hours because I will be uh, going to play pool with my friends and my brother. So, well, let's see how far we how far we can get. Um, I'm actually not listening to anything in my AirPods. Um, I have connected the uh, audio of my computer to it, but I've now disabled it. Like it's actually fair pointing it out. I'm not listening to anything, so I don't need them. Maybe they are the reason for, uh, maybe they are the reason for the audio desync. I don't know. Hello, handsome Mads. Back to you. Uh, so let's go. A path consists out of multiple path segments. And what we want to do with the path um, is like once we want to be able to get a point relative uh, to the path's length on the path. But more importantly, um, when we're later going to be making the command to teleport you around, what we want to do is to say, OK, I want to I want to fly. Um, I want to I want to fly the camera path in, let's say, 10 seconds. So please generate. 200 points for me. Yep, yeah, that's the right math. That's the right math because you need 20 points per second. Um, so what we're going to be making is a function. That gets us the points. Yo, what's up, Maki? Hey, let's go. Nice to see you on the stream, boy. I know that you've been programming quite a bit as well. Uh, I have huge respect for that. Um, hopefully, you're going to like it. Uh, we're going to be making some fun stuff. Yeah. So basically, this function is going to be giving us uh, the desired amount of points on the path, all of which are equidistant, which means all of which have the same distance from each other so that when you fly along it and teleport it, you go at a constant speed. So in order to do that, um, we got to know the length of the path. Um, I got to think about this real quick. What do I want to return a double? And let's make it a lazy. So this is a Kotlin specific thing. Um, if you uh, if you use the by lazy construct, then uh, you are going to uh, this is only going to be evaluated once, but only when it is needed for the first time. So you can do something like uh, length or like just access it as a property on the object, and it's going to be uh, this calculation in this function is going to be done only the first time then the result is going to be remembered, but it's only going to be done if it's actually needed. We could also make this not lazy, of course, but uh, it's, it's, just a, it's just a good thing to do. Um, so yeah, how do we calculate, the, how do we calculate the, the length of this path? Now, here's the thing. 
uh where were we with uh paul burke uh we we still have him over there but anyway so for uh for linear interpolation it's quite straightforward to know um how long this line between the two points is because we just use some uh pythagoras uh a squared plus b squared plus c squared and then the taking the square root of that you know you you know the drill like just the distance between two points quite basic formula however if we're going uh, going into territory of uh, uh, cosine cubic and other interpolations things aren't as easy there is no real good formula to calculate the length uh, of this path segment so what we're going to be doing um, is yeah we're just going to be sampling uh, a bunch of points on this path and then use uh, approximation of like just linear uh, measurement to get its length. Like it's just an approximation, but it's going to be enough for our purposes. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to say, okay, give me the point at 10% of the path, which is here, 20% and so on. And then we're just going to draw straight lines between them and sum it as the distance. So that's the only way you can actually calculate this, unfortunately. I wish there was a proper way, but this should be good enough. So, um, I gotta think real quick. How did how did this work again? Ah, Let me actually add a static constant. I'm really bad coming up with names like that. Wait, is it is it this or is it until? But excluding the specified value, we want to include it. So we're using this syntax. Basically, you don't really do for loops in Kotlin instead, uh, or like um, with the, you don't do this uh, i equals zero, uh, while i lower than whatever i plus plus. You don't do that. You use uh, this kind of construct in Kotlin. It doesn't even have this other loop. So. Um, In Kotlin, there is no such thing as null unless you uh, explicitly specify that your object can be null. So this wouldn't work because if you say I have a location, then you're expected to have a location. Can only maybe not have a location if you add the question mark, which makes it a nullable type. And um, I've just been asked the question why I don't code in spigot instead of bucket. It's the same thing at the end of the day like um this is running on spigot this is the uh, I, i'm pretty sure that it even has the spigot dependency so yeah we are working in spigot the only proper question would be why i'm not using paper because the paper api adds some stuff on top of the spigot api however i don't want to like limit my users to having to use paper which is a fork of spigot. Um, all right, here we are. Um,
Okay. We obviously. So here's the thing. Um, in uh, Kotlin, if you make a if you make a variable a val, that means it is can't be changed anymore. It can't be reassigned. Um, if you make it a var, then it can be reassigned. And since we are looking to sum up the length, we are simply um, we we need to make it a variable, as well as the previous position, which we need to remember in the loop here. Um, what this does is basically it only executes this block if um, prefpos is not uh, if prefpos is not null. So it's just a, a built-in function in Kotlin. I can show you the implementation. Basically, um, yeah, it literally just runs the the lambda block that you supply um, uh, supplied with on the object. However, um, we're using it because it allows us to use the question mark dot um notation to test whether it's not null so what we could also just do is yep um i'm explaining it again uh, when i say camera studio no i do not mean server-sided replay mod what we are doing is Something like this. You can create points in your uh, on your server, and then it's going to be doing some interpolation between them and fly you. However, instead of just using linear interpolation as we did here, uh, we're going to be using smooth interpolation like the replay mod does. So that's what we're building. It's mostly for people who want to make cinematics or uh, speed builds, for example. So it's also pretty good for builders, time lapses. All right. Um, so yeah, now we have this function or this property. Which returns the path segments approximate length. Amazing. Now we let's go back to the path. Um, Now we got to sample a bunch of points on the path as required here. In Kotlin, you use a mutable list of to create a mutable list. Um, as you can see, uh, points now has the type mutable list because if you only have the list type, then you won't be able to access any functions that uh, add or remove any elements from the list. So that's why we're creating a mutable list. You could also do this uh, explicitly by doing by specifying the type here, but I kind of really like type inference, so that's why we're doing it like that. So what's our current position on the um on the path at that point? Uh, why it's immutable by default? It's not immutable by uh, it's not immutable by default. It's just a, it's just a separation of types. Um, because if you're if you wanna um, if you're passing a list somewhere, you know that this list isn't being modified by the function. If you pass an immutable list, uh, or if it wants a mutable list type, then you know that it's probably going to modify it. It's just a, a level of safety. Um, because if I were to return an array list, for example, then uh, let's let's see let's see it like this. Um, let's say I am uh, creating a function that returns a list. In that case, if you want to make changes, you are forced to copy it into a mutable list, um, which allows you to basically return a shared list. Let's say um, I return the same list to multiple invocations of uh, a function call, 
Uh, if I return it uh, as a mutable list, then the call, uh, the receiver may just change it, which could mess with internals. Like if this list is stored here and we leak it to the outside and they modify it, then our internals gets, get changed, which we don't want. So we just return it as a list, which means if they ever want to modify it, they got to copy it first. So just the level of protection, which makes a lot of sense in my opinion. All right, so now what we got to do, so basically now we got to determine which path segment we're on. Um, because as I explained earlier, paths are not uh, of the, they don't take up the same percentage of the whole path. Because again, if one path segment is a lot longer, then it needs to take up a larger space on the path. Therefore, we need to um, figure out where each path segment starts on the path, which is what we are going to be doing now. Mm. How do I best represent this? I'm probably as a list of pairs because I want a, a sorted map. I want to I wanna remember for each uh, path segment where it, where it starts relative uh, to the path. So we got to measure each path segment's length. First, wait, why does it not allow me to? get use this segment. Uh, it's just the uh, it's just an IntelliJ highlighting bug. Hold on, let me just fix the Yeah, okay, here we go. Ah. Uh. Oh, yeah, I'm just bad. I just forgot how to how to Kotlin for a second. Okay, perfect. So yeah, we can use constructor arguments. This is the constructor um, here when initializing our our properties, obviously. So Here again, I'm using lazy to um, make sure it's only evaluated once. If we want to get the length of the path, we gotta uh, we gotta um, take the sum of the of the path segments to get the path's full length. Um, I can already do this here. It's difficult for me to talk a lot here because I'm just thinking, concentrating, but I'm trying to explain it uh, as good as I can. Um, so yeah, now we're just going to space it evenly based on the length of each uh, segment relative to the total length of the path. So how do I best do that?
Oops, needs to be var, var again. This is an infix function in Kotlin, which allows you to create a pair real quick. Basically, it's an extension function on any type um, and also marked infix, which means you don't, you can uh, write it like this without the dot and the bracket. Um, and it just creates a pair of uh, this to that. So now we have, uh, we, we're adding this pair to the, uh, to the list of segments with start which means, um, which means like, yeah, this should work. Okay. Let me, let me explain real quick. Basically we're just going over each segment on the path and, um, uh, marking the relative start on the path based on its length, uh, on the path, uh, relative to the length of the path, which means, okay, let's just, let's just see like that. Um, if you have two path segments on your path, like, uh, let's just say a triangle. Let me see if I have, yeah. All right. Let's just, let's just assume that, uh, the only this part exists, uh, here in this graphic, this is our path. Then basically, uh, we have the full length here of the path, which is, let's just say three, and this is two maybe, and this is one. Um, and then in, in total, it's three, then this is starts at zero, then we are here at 0 0.66 on the path, and then here it's one. So that's essentially just what we're doing in this loop. If you have any more uh, specific questions on understanding stuff, again, just ask. If you don't ask, I'm just going to assume that you understand it. Um, great. So now that we have our segments with start, we need to determine for each point on which path segment we are. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Now it's all making a bunch of sense. Um, this is a function that will give us for each point on the path or for, or for any position on the path, um, it's going to give us the path segment that we're on and the progress on that path segment. So for example, again, taking this example, if we take, uh, if you say, okay, I want something at point 0 0.5 on the path, then that would be somewhere around here. So it would be the first path segment and at around two thirds on that path segment, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, that's, that's what it's going to give us. I'm, I'm really good at making super long function names. Yeah, let's just make it a bit shorter. But I prefer being uh, explicit and having the code explain itself rather than writing uh, an unmaintainable mess. So, I can probably use binary search to find the, per, uh, the index of the path segment because now, um, let me just document this real quick. Yeah. Hmm. 
what does this return if there is none found minus one let me see just a sanity check it's going to um crash or throw you an error if the value you put in is not within the range of the path which is uh zero to one that's what we want here uh, these are the values that we expect so so basically wait i need to think here what is the right way to do this I'm thinking. Yep. You say the last index with value less than the position. Um, yeah, I'm just going to try it. I'm trusting you here. For some reason, uh, it's really hard for me to think about this while being on a live stream. Um, <clears throat> I would probably just usually just get out my um, my little note block. Mm. Uh. So here's a nice thing that you can do uh, in Kotlin, which is called destructuring, because our pair here is uh, it has a first and uh, and a second and it's a data class. This allows us to basically um, extract the first and the second properties into uh, separate variables by using the destructuring uh, operator. Mm. But... I'm probably going to be having to check some edge cases here in a second. Wait. What happened here? Ah, it's index of last. Sorry, I'm having brain fart moments. Okay, so basically, in order to get the relative position on that path segment, we got to know at what point the next segment starts. Uh, this is going to give us uh, an error in case the segment here is already the last one, but I'm going to take care of that in the end. First, you want to get down the, gen the general algorithm, and then you can take care of the edge cases later. So... Now we got to do reverse linear interpolation.
calculate the um, length on the path of this segment. All right, here we go. This should do the trick. Now I got to think again about um, Now I just got to think about the uh, edge cases again. So okay, I want the I want the first point where Yeah, I think this is how we get it. Basically, um, to get the index of the segment um, that we w that we are on, we got to get the one before, so minus one, um, the first one that is, that comes after. Uh, that comes after our position. Mm. I really wish that this would return null because that would allow us to create the uh, use the not null operator here, but but whatever. This is convention in all of the new in in any new library that I build in Kotlin. <coughs> I always uh, go ahead and return null. If any, if if the index couldn't be found, it just makes so much more sense than returning minus one. I don't know why they did that uh, with the standard library when they had the opportunity to do it correctly, but yeah, whatever. So Wait, if it can't find any segment, hold on. If it can't find any, what does that mean? It means that we are at the end actually. So next segment start is the end. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that this is how it needs to go. Oh, oops. We're almost, we're almost done with this. We're almost, we're almost through here. Uh, hello, Flo. Yep, I may be a bit of a nerd. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. This is a really nice thing in Kotlin. Um, uh, we have a we have an extension function. We have so many extension functions in the Kotlin standard library. Um, but one of them is uh, the last index extension function, which allows us for every list to just 
do this dot size minus one um, without having to actually type it. Like it just adds so much stuff that you commonly want. It's just beautiful. I love it. I'm, I'm in love. Yeah, that that's that's what it is. All right. So this can be a valve. What IntelliJ tells me this too. Oh, these as well. Okay, now we should really have it nailed. Um, if I didn't, if I didn't screw anything up. I, oh man, I'm really like I really gotta document all of this later. Actually, let me just do it right now. Um, because usually you, you get a document while you are coding because you're realistically not going to come back later. I'm just skipping out on it because I'm explaining it to you, but that's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. All right, here we go. Well, Florian, documentation is overrated. Yeah, I was just about to burn your code base that I've seen that doesn't have that much documentation, but I'm, I'm not going to stoop that low. <laughs> oh, man. Oh no, did I just start a war in our in our comments? Oh no, I'm uh, I'm sorry. Hi hi Jackson by the way, mine coder. Nice to see you here. So yeah, um uh, this is this is what we have now. Um for each uh, position on the path, I'm now going to uh, get the segment index and position and simply return that point. I think that's how it should work in theory. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, pretty sure that's how it should work. Here we go. Now, unfortunately, I think that we may run into some issues later um, where it moves a little bit quicker um, around these turning points, but I'm going to come up with a solution to that if we have time. Um, because basically, we this is still assuming that we are that like moving or like sampling at an uh, equal interval or a constant interval on the path will give us points um, that are equally distant but it actually doesn't do that yet on your crackle is back it's better it's better it's better it's better better now better now tell me tell me i've sent i've sent this to you to low latency, low latency so that i can talk to you Did it fix it? Fix it. It's better. It's better. Not better. Our our point of what? Back then. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. 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 <laughs> uh, I'm just going to switch to. Oh, this could be real bad, but I have set up um, some filters that give us some noise suppression. Please let me know if this is all right now. <laughs> no, no, don't don't drag the crispy tuna in the mud like that. Um, okay, well, we are on the internal microphone now, but 
I it should be okay with uh, the noise cancellation. My MacBook is really, uh, my MacBook is really loud. Oh, we have a audio in front of the video. That could be because of the um, latency settings. I can't change them now, so whatever. It's gonna be fine. Um, yeah, screw you, SM SCM3. Usually I use the Rode NT1A to record music and stuff, but I uh, when I moved to the UK, I donated the one, or I just gifted it to a friend of mine who's a really, really talented singer because I want to support her. So she has my proper mic now. Um, so I, like, my brother just gave me this one. I was like, oh yeah, this is the one I'm using. But, uh, yeah, it's apparently not good enough. Screw you and you, your hardware that I don't know. Hi, Cutter. Good seeing you. Fun fact here. Um, the Cutter had the idea of uh, making the replay mod before um, I actually started implementing it. He once showed me his repository. Um, but the most notable thing that I re uh, remembered about it was his really, really funny commit messages, which were just like, ah, oh, do some more stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, who asked? That's my brother, by the way. It's my brother. So, sub dog. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, here we are now um, returning a bunch of points. Let's actually just get back to uh, making the commands now. Um, I'm using cloud. Let me let me let me get rid of that thing real quick. Um, I'm using cloud. I gotta figure out real quick how to set up the annotation processing. Um, sh kind of should have done that before the before the stream probably, but it's whatever. So cloud annotations. Why does it want another argument? What does it want here? Command sender class. Why? That's not in the documentation, is it? Is that in the documentation? It's not. This is outdated. What is this? What is this? That's a joke. Uh, goodbye, Frisk. Thank you very much for coming. It's been really great seeing you again. Um, it's been a long time since we've talked. Much love out to you, and I hope that your life is as good and pleasant uh, as mine is at the moment. Um, yeah, well, okay, so yeah, I'm, I got a, I got a scold uh, city here because this is not up to date. So it wants, it wants a class. It wants a class. Um, Wait, where is the constructor here? Right, so I so I literally just do this. Huh. All right. Well, that's uh, well, that's cool. Florian, uh, yes, yes, I do feel I do feel British, but um, truth be told, after uh, leaving the Knox crew, um, I'm probably not going to be staying in the UK for much, much longer because, you know, the weather, the food, the women, three things that I'm not too fond of there. So I'm probably just going to be sticking to, uh, so I'm probably just going to be sticking to Europe, Southern Europe. Uh, and we'll see, we'll see. I know that you, you, you chose the Netherlands. Um, that's pretty nice. I got to visit you sometime. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did say it. It's it's just the truth. Like, um, I know it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit off topic, but um, in the five minutes uh, after landing at uh, Cologne Airport, when I visited my friends for the first time after moving to the UK, I saw more attractive women that were uh, to my liking, if I might, may say so, than in the whole half half year before that. So, yeah. Sorry to all of the British women out there who I just offended, but it's just probably just a type thing. Still, much love goes out to, to, to the UK. Like, I absolutely love... Oh, Flo is single. Let's go. I'm going to come and visit you. And maybe maybe when, when I leave, you're not going to be single anymore. You know what I'm saying. 
Anyway, so now we got our annotation parser here. Uh, what do we got to do um, to scan? Okay. Ah, call annotation parser dot parse. Mm. That's what I was implying, Julian. That's what I was implying. Hello, Sharul. Nice to have you here. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting back to work. So we are pausing the annotations um, of this class, which means that anything we write in this class here, um, the Ultimate Camera Studio plugin class, um, each function that is annotated with at command method is going to be um, run or like available as a command. I think they can be private. Um, what do we need here? I always need examples. Always give me an example and I'm happy. Uh, the replay mod is available for 1.17 to our beta testers and you can become a beta tester by becoming a VIP patron on our Patreon that is patreon.com slash replay mod. Uh, but we are going to be releasing it publicly at some point once beta testing is through. But if you cannot wait and want it now, then uh, you have to support us. That's how it works. Um, okay, yeah, so... So now I want to uh, store for every player um, the points of their current camera path, of course. Um, you never store a player instance because if you forget removing it and the player leaves the server, um, then you're going to have a memory leak. So that's going to be not that good. Uh, I mean, we could make it a player because... I because if we just remove it on the player logout event, then that's going to work. But you, you, you usually generally just want to use a UUID here. Um, it needs to be a mutable map because we uh, want to change it. Uh, same thing as with the lists. We have the map interface and we have the mutable map interface. And since we want to modify it uh, here, we want to make it a mutable map. So first of all, let's make this a listener. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so what we're doing here uh, simply is setting, uh, registering this class as a, a bucket event listener, which allows us to um, do the at event handler public run on player. Is it quit or leave? Oh, it's player quit actually. Dope. Um, I got a question on uh, other APIs like Forge and MCP. I, I know about Forge and Fabric. Um, we used Forge to make the replay mod. Uh, I haven't used Fabric myself because uh, Johnny, uh, who's the co-creator of the replay mod, who does all of the work these days, um, he, uh, he switched it over to Fabric in 1.14, I think. Um, and from what I've heard, it's just so much nicer than 
forge but i haven't actually i know i actually have used it myself but only for very small stuff very small stuff but yeah um if you are making mods these days then i heard that fabric is the way to go um if it's even still a thing maybe it's been discontinued i don't know um but yeah basically When a player leaves, we're going to remove their entry from our points by player map. Um, in Kotlin, you can use the very nice uh, minus equal syntax for this. So, otherwise you would need to do a dot remove. But uh, yeah, again, Kotlin has a lot of nice extension functions. This is an extension function for the minus sign assign operator function, which literally just calls remove on the map. Uh, here we go now here we have the campy command uh, let me just uh, whoops nope 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 I don't nope let's just look at this bigot MC page um, somebody forked the original uh, camera studio uh, plugin with my permission and he has a very nice list of commands. I mean, maybe I originally wrote that. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be using this reference uh, as a reference for the commands that we're going to be adding today. Um, All right. So basically, now we're going to be getting the list of points for this uh, for this player. Oh, oh! Somebody went to a Ford Ford Discord. I mean, so here's the thing. Um, if you go to any kind of forum that is about a specific technology, and you're like, uh, "Oh, how do I use this technology?" But then it turns out that you don't know how to code, um, uh, then people are probably going to be like okay you first you got to know the basics of coding before you can learn this framework before you can um yeah because otherwise if you don't have the foundations then there's no point in learning forge you know um but i'm not surprised that you got banned uh, on the forge forum um i got banned by lex manners uh, as well He's a he's an interesting person. I don't want to talk. Uh, I don't want to badmouth anybody. But yeah, I've I've also had my issues with him. So it's not surprising to hear that you got banned. Many people have been uh, for no apparent reason. <laughs> All right. So yeah. Anyway. Let's allow the player to also specify a location. For the camera point, they want to have it specific and not where they currently are. Um, how do I make this nullable? Wait a second. Oh yeah, slash r slash Minecraft is also an interesting one. I'm also banned from there for self-promotion. I mean, to be fair, I kind of get it. Uh, but my stuff was getting upvoted quite immensely when, back when I was making um, command block stuff and redstone stuff. And all I did was add a little watermark that linked to my YouTube channel so that people don't steal it. And obviously because I wanted people to come to my channel, right? But the stuff was immensely popular, so I don't understand why they removed it, because I don't think it did any harm. People liked the content and, like, sent them to my YouTube, but I got banned for it. And many other cool creators got banned for it as well. Um, so, that's just how it is. Um, just gotta live with it, you know? Like, I don't get upset about this kind of stuff anymore. Um...
Okay, now it's kind of unfortunate that we're not using paper because with paper we could be using the adventure library to make nice chat components. Like this, we're going to have to use uh, chat colors. All right, wait a second. So what this does here, um, uh, it basically, if location, the location that is passed is null, then it uses the player's location as the input. Hello, Alveleg. Nice seeing you here. Um, what does the two string function of this look like? Oof, that's not that's not beautiful. But we're gonna make it beautiful later. Just gonna make it beautiful later. Let's use the string substitution here as well, and that should work now. All right. So, in an ideal world, this will uh, allow us to add points now. I'm just going to start the server real quick, just to see if everything works up until here. I'm a little bit skeptical, because I've been coding for about an hour now, um, without ever testing it. But we got our Minecraft instance here. Um, here we go. Said to remove some servers from the list. <laughs> Stuff that you're not supposed to be seeing. Ooh. Ah, I'm not. I'm, I'm gotta wait till it's started. Did it enable the plugin? Yes, it has been enabled. Let's go. So let's see. This is the moment of truth, I guess. The first moment of truth. I wish this moment of truth was a little bit less long. Like, I want the truth now, please. Thank you. Let's go! Okay, apparently we cannot make this... Arg uh, is it possible to make this argument nullable? How do I make it optional? How do I make it optional? I know how to do it without Ah, here we go. We gotta make it uh, in square brackets instead of curly, uh, instead of diamond brackets. Make it optional. Let's just try that again real quick. Rerun the server, recompile. That's the most fun part of programming. Waiting until you're able to see if your changed code works. In the meantime, I'm going to be start. I'm going to start uh, adding the camp start command. Oh, oops, that's not how it works. So uh, we're just going to make it so that you specify the duration in seconds, but um,
no 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 raider this time you're wrong um because duration is a mandatory it's a mandatory argument this one only needs to be the um square brackets because it's an optional argument duration is mandatory you always got to pass it hence uh this you see foo required bar optional i'm explaining it um So, um, yeah, yeah, all right. So, right now we gotta construct, um, now we gotta construct a path from the players, um, from the players' points. However, First of all, I'm going to see if the optional argument has worked now. Yes, sir. Indeed. Can I OP myself here? Oh, yeah. Very nice. Cool. So adding points works now. Super easy thanks to the amazing cloud framework by Incendo slash City. Again, go give it a try. Hello, man with Reft. Nice having you here on the stream. Um, thanks for joining us. So um, let's create the let's construct the path now. How do we create the path? What do we need for that? Yep, it is a list of path segments. So first of all, to create the path segments i mean i'm also going to add it to the do this What does this return? Ah, yeah, it does return a nullable object. That's how it needs to be. I really gotta, like... I really got to change the messaging later to to be better than just printing it out like that but this is sufficient for now i'm going to make this all a little bit prettier uh later down the line Actually, yeah, so Kotlin is pretty smart here. As you can see, um, you cannot just use the any property on the points because um, it might be null, right? Only save calls are allowed. However, because we're checking if the points are null here and then telling the player like, oh, you need camera point mate. Um, if we return, then this can never be reached with the points being null. So all of a sudden, it's a legitimate statement that we can just make. Um, Uh, it needs to be mutable, of course. Prefer this this notation. Okay, so basically now between each pair of points, we are creating, uh, we're adding a path segment to the list.
we are starting to iterate at uh, index one because uh, the first segment obviously um, uses the first point um, and zero minus one would give us an underflow or an index out of bounds exception, I guess. So now how do we create a path segment? We need a bunch of interpolation here. So what we're going to be doing is creating an interpolation segment uh, or an interpolation instance for each path segment or for each axis for this path segment. Um, let's actually just start with the linear interpolation. Later, I'm going to change it to the Catmull ROM interpolation. I just want to verify first whether it works uh, with the simple case so that I don't need to check uh, whether the Catmull ROM spline interpolation is what is at fault, even though it shouldn't be. Um, Okay, we get it converted to a double because unlike uh, Java, you cannot pass uh, a float to functions that require a double because uh, Kotlin really wants you to be explicit in your type conversions and I can appreciate that, to be honest. So now... Uh, going on here all right we get a in Kotlin by the way uh wait this is the thing no no uh, in Kotlin, by the way, you do not use dot equals. Instead, you use the equals operator. If you want to do identity comparison, like the equals equals operator in Java, you would use a triple equals. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Just so much nicer than you have to write... Uh, um, than if you have to write uh, dot equals. This will be public. Um, it will be on my GitHub. As a matter of fact, I've already uploaded the... Um, this boilerplate fork where, where I'm going to push to. Um, just going to send you the link in here. This is not PyCharm, but it is uh, IntelliJ, which is made by JetBrains. So it's pretty much PyCharm is based on IntelliJ. It's just uh, a, a, a chain, uh, like a modification of IntelliJ for Python. So um, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing at the end of the day. Oh, uh, what? Well, yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna assume that the world is not null here. Yeah. I don't know if an identity comparison would work, but most likely it would. Yes, I don't, I think that there's only one world instance, but that's just the, um, bucket internal. Let's see um, how equals is implemented. It's not implemented specially for world, so maybe it is for craft world. Oh, crazy! I don't have the don't have the NMS sources here. That could become a little bit tricky later if we're doing um, player mounting. So let's see. Oh, by the way, in case you didn't notice, um, the Kotlin doesn't have the new keyword. Instead, you just create it by calling the constructor like this. It, where it would be new, new path in Java, it's only path. 
in Kotlin. Because you don't need that. Um, but yeah, closed. I think that an identity comparison would most likely work. Oh God, not Kotlin is what I, what I read here. You, sir, you are wrong. If you say that Kotlin is not like a whole nother league of goodness compared to Java, then you are wrong, sir. Or rather, in my opinion, you are wrong. Um, I just really prefer it, you know. Um, I don't really understand people that don't like it, but um, I'm not going to uh, try and convince you otherwise, I guess. Just just watch and, 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 and stay if you want. Um, but you're welcome to leave if you would like me to code in Java instead, because I'm never going back to Java. I just can't after tasting the goodness, tasting the rainbow that is Kotlin. Oh, it's just so good. Um, anyway, now we have these points. And ah well, if you if it if it comes down to ASD and bytecode stuff and and mixins and stuff like that, I haven't done it with Kotlin before, but I know for a fact that Johnny um, wrote the Better Portal mod in Kotlin, and that uses mixins. I'm not sure if they're done in Java. Um, but pro they probably are, but he's able to do bytecode manipulation like that. Not directly with um, ASM, but with mixins, so that's sufficient, I guess. And I've only had to do uh, ASM stuff once, um, back in the replay mod days before mixins were a thing. So um, I like I don't I don't ever want to do that again and I haven't had the need to do that uh, again because of mixins being a thing now so yeah in my opinion I just think that um, Kotlin is is much nicer because it gets rid of so much boilerplate having um, properties with custom getter and setter it's just it's just so beautiful having um, delegated properties which is the by syntax which is used for by lazy for example over um over here right it's just really beautiful i really like it uh, i can't go back to java it's kind of ruined for me now that i know how nice kotlin is but um yeah if that's your only reason to prefer java then i don't know if that if it's really valid because uh, <laughs> if you want to if you want to if you want to work on a project that doesn't require you to do any bytecode manipulation, then there's nothing stopping you from sticking to Kotlin. Um, anyway, now for, for, for testing purposes, we are now just going to do the same thing that we did in the old Camera Studio mod, which is to just teleport players along the path at 20 TPS. Again, this is going to be smooth later. We are going to be mounting the player um, onto um an armor stand probably or a cloud or we're going to make them spectator player again i haven't decided yet i'm going to decide that later on in the project um but yeah just to test whether the whole path system works for now we're just going to be doing teleporting and we're going to be doing it horribly like this oh it's going to be so bad from a code perspective um Again, we're going to be using destructuring here um, because with index gives us a collection of uh, index and value. So we can use destructor destructuring to get the index as well as the value like that thing you cannot do in Java. Um, I don't really know what you mean that it feels better in Java. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Like, this just feels super right to me, Kotlin. Uh, everything object-oriented as well. Um, I don't understand. But again, I'm not going to uh, tell you that you're wrong, because at the end of the day, it's personal preference, right? Um, and I have found that for myself, I just greatly prefer Kotlin. Um, 
uh, I am actually planning to do live, uh, live streams uh, in the future because um, I know that like uh, an hour from now or an hour and 10 minutes when my friends and I are going to go play some pool, um, I'm not going to be done. However, I, th I think it's a lot of fun to be coding this uh, while talking uh, to you guys. So I'm probably just going to be doing another live stream finishing this project. Classics, go ahead and do it. Like just go and start um when i worked at the nox crew i like just presented my my team with the option of switching to kotlin and uh i mean i told him look let's 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 give it a try and within a week or two all of the team members had uh uh understood kotlin enough to be writing good code you know um hello random guy well i'm Let's say I'm not like super deep in the Minecraft community. Um, after the replay mod, I kind of left it for, for some time. Um, I've been doing a lot of audio uh, work. I wrote an auto-tune plugin, which has been uh, quite successful and quite good. It's called Crispy Tuner. Hold on, let me show it to you. It has now been re-released by um, a pretty big plugin company who I sold it to. Um, but yeah, it's basically um, a software that allows you to do pitch correction on your vocals. This was created by me. I did that before switching. Um, yeah, I, I just did that because I was interested in it after I left the community. Um, I'm now going to be working some more with them probably and be doing more audio stuff. But I want to do some more Minecraft stuff as a hobby because this just feels like something I want to do now. I just felt like it, you know, I'm just doing what I feel like don't really have any obligations at the moment um and but before that i was ma I, I made mc championship like i was pretty much the only developer on mcc season one and um then i worked with the nox crew up until two months from now or up until two months in the past i guess as their lead developer and now i just then i realized that i actually don't want to be a lead developer just want to do my um just want to do my my own stuff so this is where i am and i don't have any obligations right now which feels really good so whenever i want i'm just like hey you know what let me let me cut this let me make a let me make a let me make a live stream yeah two months ago you know i've been living in the uk for a whole bloody year i've been living there for a whole bloody year mate uh, <laughs> so you 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 would think that my english has gotten to the point where I can talk it natively, but I guess sometimes everybody forgets about uh, a word or two. Um, where were we? Runnable. Excuse me. Why can I not do this like that? How do I create a, a bucket runnable? What's going on here? Yeah, I know, I know, I, I know I want a bucket runnable, but would it work like this? It would. The problem is all of this works great, but I actually want to um, have it delayed. Um, you know what?
how what does what does what does Kotlin want me to do here um this is weird ah uh, it works here because it uh, because it allows me to pass a runnable oh right the only problem here that we were facing is that I pass it an int instead of a instead of a long yeah here we go um because now I can actually use a runnable which allows me to use that lambda here um just a little brain lag I guess uh, I just need to convert uh, the delay to a long here we go so what this basically does it it just schedules a ton of tasks um one per tick in uh succession to um uh, teleport the player to the respective point. This is awful, of course. We should have some sort of manager that keeps track of uh, where players are currently on the path, etc., etc. Um, but sh should be fine. Should be fine now. Let's see. Let's see if our linear interpolation here works. Uh, later, if we're changing it to the cubic interpolation, we got to change this loop a little bit to also be able to access the points. Yeah, it's going to be choppy. It is 100%. Like, again, I've written this before, um, and it's just 20 FPS. However, I've also written the code for the MCC intros, so which are super smooth, and we are mounting that onto uh, armor stands there. No, 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 Gast. We are going to be mounting them on an armor stand or making them spectate a player because uh, that way you get the client side interpolation. With velocity, it's impossible to get it accurately represented. But yeah, if you're riding on some uh, entity or if you're spectating an entity, then uh, there is client side interpolation on the positions there. All right, server is started. Now let's see what's going on. Whoops. I, I actually uh, know for a fact that it works. Yeah, man, I did search ASMR. I love ASMR. I listen to it to uh, fall asleep, and I'm not ashamed of it. It's cool. It's a cool thing, man. Um, I don't like the... I don't like the... Let's just call them boob streamers. Because um, they usually don't create good content, because people click it anyway. Uh why is there auto completion for these numbers what is going on cloud um but um yeah asmr uh, zeitgeist he's great he makes great asmr love it let's go whoop, whoop, whoop. it is choppy as hell but it did work let me just celebrate that with a good old dab um <laughs> really nice really nice it worked first try incredible so um let's go and make uh make use of this uh nice little uh catmull rom interpolation that we wrote here i look like your military buddy well which military was it maybe i was your military buddy got my gun locked away in the closet no, i'm just i'm just joking i've never been to the military and i don't think I'm never going to go. I'm a, I'm a pacifist at heart. And there's no mandatory uh, serving in Germany anymore. There used to be, but it was removed before I turned 18. So let's go. Um, well, Lukinka, to be fair, I also wrote uh, something similar to this like 500 times before. I wrote this for MCC. I wrote this something like that for the replay mod. Um, I wrote the original camera studio, uh, plugin. I wrote a pixel cam mod, which is like that, but as a mod. So, um, yeah, I kind of wrote this kind of code, uh, a few times before. So it's not too surprising that it works, but let's uh, switch it up and change it to Catmull Rom's spline interpolation now. 
as you know, here we got to pass it four instead of uh, two values. I'm going just going to repeat it um, here because in order to be able to curve it smoothly, um, we need to uh, tell it the previous and subsequent points so that it knows how to curve into the point, right? Um, Adrian, enjoy your dinner. Thank you for being here. And I hope to see you around again if I stream, uh, stream once more. So here we got our Catmull Rums population, which needs more points. Um, So basically, um, uh, if we have our, if we have, uh, if, if we are on the first point, yeah, um, we're just going to tell it, uh, or no, if we, if we are here, then there is obviously no previous point. We're just going to tell it about this point again, which is what happens with this max expression here. I minus one is always guaranteed to work because we start iterating at once so we don't need a max expression there i'm going to use this at least um This uh, is a little bit nicer. Yes, this is Kotlin and I'm proud of it. Kotlin, best language that exists in the JVM world. But also besides that, I haven't actually found a language that I like as much as Kotlin. Uh, you know what, at this point, I'm just gonna forego this. Um, so p0.x, p1.x. P2.x and P3.x. Same with P1, uh, P0, P1, P2, All right, now let's see. Catmull Rom spline interpolation, here we come. Well, I used to hate on JS and I still hate on JS, but it is actually quite nice if you use uh, TypeScript. So I've actually written one uh, pretty big internal project at the Nox crew, or actually several of them uh, in TypeScript. Um, because TypeScript is pretty much, it's, it's super similar to Kotlin or probably the other way around. I'm not sure which one came first. Um, but yeah, it also has this similar syntax of declaring, uh, types with this after a semicolon uh, and return types like this. It's, it's very similar. Um, but pure JavaScript, like, please don't use it, man. Don't use it. I mean, I have very strong opinions. At the end of the day, everybody can do what they what they deem fit. But JavaScript without TypeScript is like, eh. JavaScript with TypeScript, however, is strong, and I, w I would voluntarily choose it. Kotlin TypeScript conspiracy. Let's go. 
Kotlin and TypeScript are my number two languages at the moment, like my number two favorite ones. So let's see. Campy. I'm camping. Gonna eat in the canteen. Oh damn, I'm getting into my freestyle mode again. Sorry, sorry about that. So yeah, let's just make a bunch of points. It's gonna be still like 20 FPS, of course. However, it is also going to give us a smooth interpolation now. Yeah, let's go. There is still some lag, uh, some weird stuff going on here, but I think that is probably caused by me not properly accommodating for the velocity of the of the spline to make it slow down. I'll have to see. Um, yeah, I forgot to press F1. That's the that's the problem. <laughs> um, no, but okay. Now we got now we got some nice. Um, now we got a good starting point. Um, ah, I just closed Minecraft. That's going to be costly later when I got to wait five minutes to start it again. Okay, now now that we have this uh, interpolation down, or at least I think it, it is correct. It feel it felt it felt like it was right. Um, uh, we are now going to be uh, mounting the player onto an armor stand, or are we gonna be creating an entity that we will spectate? We're going to be going with, uh, we're going to be going the entity route. Let me think about that real quick. How do we make a fake entity in Spigot? How often I make streams? Uh, I don't know. However, I feel like it. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash crushpixel um, to be notified whenever I'm going to stream again. But I'm not going to be able to finish this plugin in the stream. So I'm most likely just going to be making another stream um next week probably during the week so whenever whenever um okay so now i only have i don't have any nms code here how do i get nms into my gradle dependencies i'm going to google that What are my current dependencies? Again, I didn't set this project up from scratch myself, so I don't know. That's why I'm a bit surprised that I don't have NMS, even though it makes sense. Um, built up Gradle. All right, we're using speak radle. So I'll have to see how to get NMS here. Hmm. I'm gonna try that. Let's see if Gradle knows this. T 
Did that work? Hold on. Didn't. Thank you very much, random guy. It's kind of weird to call you random guy, by the way. I hope you're aware of that. Like, I recommend you get yourself a nickname. <laughs> oh, who are you talking to? Oh, just a random guy. Quite literally. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Spigot API versus Spigot. That's precisely what I wanted. Thanks, bro. Did it reload now? Okay. So I think it's still downloading metadata here. I just lost the... Oh, right. I got to run the whole... Probably got to run the build tools now, I guess. But there should be a task generated. Is there a search function here? Why can I not search for tasks? Come on. I don't know what I'm doing. The advantages of using Gradle over Maven, well, I personally just greatly prefer this syntax. I don't like the idea of having XML. Like, it's just clunky files, in my opinion. Also, this is a, an imperative um, language versus uh, a declarative language right in maven you can't really do stuff like for loops for example while in groovy you can it's a language um let me see how i did download the, the build tools but i'm not sure if it's prepare spigot what i want is that what i want i'm just i'm just guessing here but I know for a fact that I, I need to uh, install, uh, that I need to ins install the build tools in order for this to work. Just going to read some documentation real quick. I hope you don't mind. I probably got to add Maven local to my repositories. That is most likely it. I do not play uh, any games at the moment, to be honest, except for sometimes um, I'm going to be playing some more F1 2017 with my brother. Because I just gifted him a gaming laptop. So now I kind of feel like I, I kind of deserve to play a little bit with it as well. <laughs> All right, hold on. Repositories is supposed to go down there. Can it work now? The packages are not resolved, I think, because the build tools install it into your local Maven. That's my current um, suspicion. Yeah, here we go. Now we got it locally. All right, baby. Okay, let's go. That was the right solution. 
So, okay, now we got, now that we got this out of the way, let's use some uh, NMS to teleport players. Yes, uh, I mean, I, I don't really have a job. I've never been, never been employed, um, except for my time with Nox Crew. But I would say that, uh, yeah, I'm a programmer, but I'm going to be doing other business stuff as well. Like, uh, I don't see myself programming till the rest of my life. I'm going to found a business at some point and be a team leader again just like I was as the lead dev of the of the Nox crew. But um, I don't have any concrete plans. Right now I'm just kind of living my life and do things that interest me. And yes, that usually means programming. Um, so, okay, what did I want to do here? Um, It is time to visit the wiki.vg uh, where you can see the current Minecraft protocol. And I need that in order to... Currently I don't do anything for a living because I... I mean, hold on. I, I, I showed this earlier. I've, I've developed this plugin here, the Crispy Tuna has now been re-released by Brainworks and as you may imagine um, it being quite the successful plugin I made a little bit of money with that so I'm living off of that and just uh, which allows me to just not be forced to have a job so I'm doing stuff that I want to do like making these plugins uh, until I come across something else that's going to make me some money um, and yeah I think in my opinion that's how everybody should live and that's not possible with our current uh, capitalist world. So, I don't know. Um, I wish we had just, uh, how do you say, universal income? If we had universal income, then I think that everybody could find out what their passions are and follow them without having to think about, okay, how do I feed my family? How do I feed myself? However, that's not where we are at the moment so all i can do is uh, be really really grateful for the fact that i am in a position where i can live like that and yeah if i ever if i ever um make another business i absolutely want to make sure that my employees have that freedom i would also do a, a four day work week because there have been studies uh, by microsoft in japan for example that clearly show that productivity goes up if uh, if you only work four days a week, same time um, uh, across those four days. So just one day it's just dropped, same pay, they're more productive. So yeah, I hope that one day we can get towards society that is a little bit friendlier just towards the normal people like, like you and me. Um, but we'll see, we'll see about that. It's not about, it's not about uh, communism. This is, doesn't have anything to do with communism in my opinion um because we're not going to be sharing it's just about giving everybody the chance to make something of themselves without forcing them to uh, take a job right because i mean i can just tell from my own experience after quitting my last job um i didn't do anything for a while and that just gets boring so if you just get money um uh, to to be bored uh you figure out what you're going to what, what your what your passion is because you're not just going to be chilling all day because that gets boring real quick. So I think that's something that we should absolutely do. Um, but yeah, we're going to we're going to see. I don't know. This is getting a little bit political, uh, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, all right. So here over there, we got a spawn player packet. Um, after the player info packet. So, okay, the idea is that we spawn a fake player, which is uh, then spectated. So first of all, we get to send a player info packet. This is the packet we need to create. So let's see how we do that.
Oh, it's even public. Public constructor, that's quite neat. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You become more creative, and so you're inevitably going to be doing stuff that are uh, interesting to you. And the things that interest you, um, you're always going to be best at, which means it's going to be the largest possible contribution to society because you're going to do your best work. Therefore, I think it would just make a lot of sense to allow people to actually do what they love instead of forcing them in some jobs just so that they get money. Um, all right. Add Bayer Packet. Oh, we need to pass an entity player. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. Um, all right. It seems like we got to use NMS here in order to build this uh, uh, reflection. I mean, sorry. And because I don't like vanilla reflection. We're going to be using uh, J O O R. It's org J O O Q J O O R. Hopefully this works. Why does it need an... Oh, right. Actually, we can use this constructor and then simply later modify the list we get. Oops, sorry. This is where we uh, create the fake player info data um that is going to uh, be sent to the client so what is this is the entity id yeah in an ideal world i wouldn't use it like that i think i would prefer um using mc protocol lib uh, abstractions using their um, classes it's it's a really good um, library I think it's by Steve Ice and here we go MC protocol lib the uh, Johnny Johnny's a contributor I'm a contributor as well where am I why am I not listed here I need the fame yeah here we go. 300 lines is what I added, and that's that's how I'm thanked. 27 in contributions. Come on, baby. Um, but no, any, I'm just joking. Um, yeah, see this? Just allows you to uh, create really nice, uh, create packets really easily with an abstraction. However, I don't have any boilerplate set up here to convert that into a 
um, Minecraft packet. It's not included or a spigot NMS packet, whatever. It's not included in the in the library. So I'm just going to be using NMS here. Um, but maybe one day I will write a library that allows that completely replaces the regular protocol lib. Um, because protocol lib is broken. Listen to me. Don't use protocol lib if you can avoid it whatsoever. Because we had such insane race conditions in our MCC season one that were simply caused by um, uh, protocol lib inserting a handler and protocol lib having race conditions that are terrible. Um, well, classics, uh, I use it by. Um, you can serialize the MC protocol lib packets into a netty byte stream and. That means that if you just inject yourself into the netty pipeline um, and add an encoder there um, for MC protocol packets that just writes it into the uh, as bytes, then you can uh, send these MC protocol packets into the player connection, and your encoder will convert it into the byte format the same way that the vanilla Minecraft encoder um, moves the. Uh, converts the NMS packets into bytes. Like basically you're just telling the pipeline uh, a new packet format and how to convert it into bytes to send over the network. So it's it's not that it's not that difficult. Um, there are some libraries that you can uh, take as an inspiration. Uh, I can't I can't remember the name right now. I can't find it right now, but there is one implementation of um, of a standalone protocol lib that I took as reference uh, on how to modify the Netty pipeline, and that was that was pretty easy then. But yeah, if I ever do this, it's going to be open source. Like I'm all about open source. I'm really sad that I couldn't do more stuff open source at the Knox Crew, but um, as I'm told, this is getting uh, getting better, and they're working on making stuff more um, open source. Nice, make it in Kotlin. However, again, there's one big downside of making um, stuff in Kotlin in the Minecraft world. First of all, getting contributors is going to be more difficult. Uh, secondly, you need to bundle the Kotlin runtime with uh, your plugin. So that's going to make it uh, a little bit larger because otherwise you don't have the standard lib at runtime which you need obviously to do anything um yeah how do we how do we get the entity id is it how does it how does that happen again um It on oh whoops there's there's some uh, public variable somewhere that remem reminds the next entity ID come on there you are my friend oh man so nice to see you here it's been a long time well yeah kotlin is definitely amazing um uh ever since leaving the nox crew i'm I'm really sad to see that most teams don't use kotlin so um yeah it's it's hard for me to find projects that i like working on so i'm just doing my own stuff mostly uh, but really, really good to see you here. Anyway, there is some static variable uh, somewhere that re remembers the next entity ID that is free. Uh, I'm not sure if it's entity count. I'm not sure if it's entity count. Let's see where it's used. Oh, 
welfare. Apparently they made it atomic. It didn't, it wasn't atomic uh, back in the day. That's why I didn't think it was it, but apparently it is. Um, we really got to remove this entity import here because, wait, where were we? Oh, of course it's private. Oh, of course it's private, but that's no problem. I do accept um, uh, the R's for packet gate. I'm not maintaining it. Uh, if you uh, if you want to maintain it, then shoot me a message on a, or create a GitHub issue, and I'm probably going to make you a maintainer if you appear trustworthy, bro. Um, because yeah, I'm not I'm not going to maintain. I'm the kind of guy who likes to move on from projects. It's also why I um, stopped doing work on the replay mod. It's why. Um, I gave away the crispy tuna into the hands of a large company to handle it and maintain it. It's also why um, I left the Nox crew, etc. So, yeah, I'm I'm not the kind of guy to maintain stuff. So I'm always happy about people that like my stuff, um, that want to maintain it. Okay, it works. If it, if it works like that, it's going to be uh, accessing the static property. Okay, this is how we get the um, entity ID. Got to use a little bit of reflection. That's okay. What else do we need for the player info data? Game profile. The profile really doesn't matter, so we're just going to give it um, the UUID as its name as well. Um, okay, we got the profile here, got the entity ID. What is the, okay. What's this chat base component? Is that the display name? Let's check here. Can this be not? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, lol. Yeah, let's just make it null, of course. Um. Okay. Uh. Okay, let's see if we can fix that with reflection. Yeah, it's an inner class, so by definition, to be able to instantiate it, uh, it requires us to have a. Um, uh, it requires us to tell it like which 
packet play out player info contains it, which is like kind of stupid here because this really doesn't need to be an inner class. Um, but well, I guess that's Minecraft's design for you. Like this is simply a data container. It doesn't have to be an inner class. <sighs> now it's making my life harder. Uh, how do I do that with reflection? I don't know. Hello, Dan. Oh, super nice to see you here. Um, I'm making uh, a camera studio plugin that's pretty similar to the uh, workings of the MCC intro camera path stuff. Um, well, let me just Google it. So basically, I should be able to call the constructor using reflection. Um, let's see. It's possible to do instantiation with J O O R. All right, so I do create dot get, I guess. All right, so player info packet is our first argument because that's the outer class. Then we pass it the game profile, then the ID, then the game mode, and then the iChat base component, which is null in this case. But I think I got to cast it so that it knows what type to use when reflecting. obviously like this otherwise it's going to crash um so let's see if this works wow so the idea is that we now created a player info packet with uh, that just contains information about the dummy player um and let's just send that to the player then ah oh, all right first i gotta cast it Here we go. Yeah, it's a little bit cumbersome, but this is how we can send packets. Um, I am planning on... Uh, I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'm going to be uh, compiling highlights. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to be keeping it up for now. Yeah. At least I'm going to keep it not, uh, unlisted. Um... So now that we have hopefully um, correctly created a player info pack, I'm still skeptical as to whether this is going to work. Um, uh, we actually got to spawn the player. Spawn player. Is it the named entity spawn? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that can that that looks like it works. Yeah, yeah, this is for you. I don't understand why it's translated like that. Why it's named entity? Why it's not 
you know, spawn player, but Minecraft works in mysterious ways. And also the translations are probably just bad. Um, it's a spigot localization as far as I'm aware. Okay. Now we got to use some more reflection. That's likely the entity ID. Then uh, we have the entity UUID. Then we have, what is C? Ah, that's the X position. You can see it over here. Um, Okay, the angle, I think it's a special type that's a byte. How is that calculated again? In steps of 1 265th of a full turn. Is there any, uh, is there any math I can steal here? Oh, probably it's probably, oh yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's right here. It's right here. Um, uh, well, of course it would be easier to use the official Mojang mappings, but then the plugin wouldn't be compatible with the default spigot server if you use reflection you know um because if you assume the mojang mappings when using the reflection but your spigot server just uses the spigot mappings internally then you're going to have a mismatch so in theory yes but unfortunately we're not in a world where it's as ideal as that and we can just go ahead and use it um but as far as I'm aware, Minidigger is working on a project that allows us to use it with Spigot. But uh, I haven't kept up to date with that. Why? Okay, well. I mean, it does the same thing here as well. First converting to an int and into a byte. Even though this is the decompiled code, I think that's how the byte code probably looks like. So, I don't know. All right, so now we're creating the fake player. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you some nice Kotlin feature now. We're going to be creating an extension function. Et voila, we just added an API to Bucket basically, simply by adding an extension function. This means player.sendPacket can now be called from anywhere that is able to import it from here. Um, and it just does all of this, uh, you know, NMS internal stuff and it just applies it to a, to a player instance. So we can now do player.sendPacket instead of this casting and, and stuff. It's quite nice. That's why I like Kotlin. Yes, uh, Dan, I am doing spline interpolation. Um, let me show you. I've, I've written this in this live stream, so it's no secret. Um, I've, I've simply written an interpolation uh, interface, and this is linear interpolation for reference. Just, you know, the basic linear interpolation stuff. And then here we have... Uh, a Catmull ROM spline interpolation, which is just this uh, equation, and it requires the previous and the subsequent point in order to curve correctly. Um, 
this is the website where I got the info from, or the algorithms rather. Great resource. Um, but yeah, because it because it curves like that, um, you got to tell it the previous and the subsequent points so it know, knows how it curves into this segment. I don't know anything about that classics. I'm not really up to date with the Spigot community, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah. Oh, oh man, that's a great catch close. That's a great catch. Why does this work? Um, <laughs> because it has because player which implements uh, offline player has a get player function and in Kotlin um, uh, getters and setters are converted into properties automatically so yes you are right this has to be this it just worked by a freak accident good catch that's why I like um, programming with some extra eyes because I like to make mistakes like that every now and then um, All right, so um, now we got the player spawned. So let's just do the following. Let's just make the player spectate this other fake player. Let's see if we can do that within uh, half an hour. Uh, that's when I got to leave. Should be, should, should be possible. Ah, the player must be in spectator mode. So first of all, As you can see, we have set game mode. That's the one I want. But in Kotlin, you can use the property access syntax. And that's the reason why player worked like that, you know? Um, that's the technical explanation behind it. Um, what happens in this setter? Ah, well, it literally, it literally just sends a packet manually. Um, packet play out camera. That's what it's called. All right, I guess. Good. So now we are sending a packet that makes him spectate it. And I've been told that we gotta frequently respectate in order to not get into issues with uh, chunk loading. So I'm just gonna do that in this scheduler here. Um, but instead of teleporting the player, we now actually gotta teleport the fake player around. And obviously, we gotta do that. with player move packets. No, wait, is this server bar? I want it to be client bound. Yeah, I need it to be client bound. I need the one that is sent from the server to the client. Got it. All right, I think it should just be the uh, entity position packet that I can send. Let's see. Is it this? 
I don't get confused with client bound server bound because it's pretty obvious. Like uh, bound means that's where it goes. Like once you just understand that, it's like client bound means it goes to the client. It's bound there, I don't know. Server bound means it goes to the server. Um, I don't know. I don't have issues uh, remembering that. So. All right, this seems to have a useful constructor that doesn't require an entity um, as the input. Uh, can I just use entity teleport packets everywhere? Let's just see. Let's see if that works. Because I don't want to do relative calculations right now. I really don't feel like it. Um, I don't know how the client handles it, but it should be okay. That's why we're trying things out here. All right, entity ID. Ah, uh, it's that angle thing again. I'm gonna... Let's write a utility function for this, because we don't... We want to keep this code dry. What, what, what happened here? Why did this not copy? Wait. Oops. Come on. Here we go. That should do the trick. Now we just got to send that packet oh yeah obviously we're going to do all of this inside of the schedule task all right so in theory we're done in theory we're done um we're now teleporting this fake player around everything via packets fake packets um Gotta start Minecraft again. It's... I would be incredibly surprised if this works first try, to be honest. That would be... That would be... Interesting. Yeah, Dan, I'm... Yeah, I'm definitely uh, expecting something along the lines of what Dan just said. All right, see, we're already starting with the uh, connection refuse here. All right, okay, well, yeah, well, that's because I ran because I was running the wrong task. That's that's an easy one to fix. I just didn't start the server. That's why the connection refused to connect. The suspension 
Is it the suspension? No, it's not the suspension. Because we're not talking cars or bikes. It's the suspense. The tension. Dan, you're the you're the British fella. Tell me, the suspense is killing me? Is that how you say it? I don't know. All right, server has been started. All right. All right, here we go. Internal error. Okay. That's an annoying one. Can we not use... Right. I used the wrong dependency. That's not a huge problem. We just got to use the Java 8 version. Because we're running uh, Java 8. Yeah, I'm really happy. I'm really happy about that as well, Classics. Like... That would have been annoying. I don't want to. I don't want to rewrite this all uh, with van vanilla reflection, so to speak, like Java built-in reflection. Repairing the spawn area. Let's see. Let's add a bunch of camera points. <laughs> okay, this one is understandable. This one is understandable because... Um... Player names can only be 16 characters long, and I'm, I used a, a UUID as the player name. Therefore, this error we just saw, which I already clicked away. But yeah. Um, we simply trim our UUID to the first 16 characters. This should still not cause any collisions, I think. Now we just gotta wait once more. Whenever you're ready, Minecraft, whenever you're ready. I'm, I'm just gonna be waiting then, right? Come on. What's going on? Why is this taking? Does this always take so long? I feel like canceling it now would be a mistake, but. Oh, well, well, I guess I just had to restart it. That was a weird one. It could work now. It could work now.
what do we have here now? I don't fully understand what it's telling me here. Like, that error doesn't make a lot of sense in my book. Packet play out info, right? Player info. There's a field A. Ah, right. Got it. Uh, I was setting the uh, enum to an int, the enum field. Yeah. Just a simple, probably a copy paste mistake. Um, I wanted to do it on the player spawn packet. If I, yeah, that looks about right. It's just uh, having the wrong target for my whole reflection here. That's that's one of the problems of using reflection and why you should avoid it, because it the type safety goes out of the window. Like, if this was any normal Java code, this wouldn't have compiled, because I was trying to set a field that wasn't, that wasn't of the correct type. But because it's reflection, you can shoot yourself in the foot as much as you want. Oh, that's my alarm telling me, yo, mate. You gotta leave. Oh, damn, people are spamming me on Discord. Good thing I closed it before I uh, started doing the stream. Anyway, um, let's hope it works now. If it doesn't, we're going to have to do it another time. But I'm going to be back probably, I don't know, maybe on, Mon Oop, maybe on Monday. Maybe on Tuesday. I'm going to let you know on Twitter. Just follow me there. And you shall be notified. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Now we're talking, man. Now we're talking. Um, I don't know how to... I don't know how to escape from this. But... It was pretty alright, wasn't it? But how, wait, how... Wait, what's going on here? Why can I not move? <laughs> okay. I am sneaking. That's the thing. As you can see, like, I'm, I'm sneaking. I, I just I, I can't move. What's going on? I had to reconnect. Apparently, I apparently I broke it with the packets that I was sending. Uh, not sure what exactly was going on there, but yeah, I definitely did break Minecraft. Um... Yeah, that was a big wait what moment. Um, for some reason, the player's head rotation didn't work. I don't think I did modify my own player's profile. Like, I'm just, I'm literally uh, just sending it. Wait. Let me show you the packets that I'm sending. The info packet, adding that fake player. Spawn player packet, spawning that fake player. Spectate packet, making you making a spectate that fake player. And then we're teleporting that entity around a bit. 
and we're spectating it again uh, let me actually just comment that one out for now um but That's a proper idea, Dan. That's a proper idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that. Uh, the idea for the record is um, sending the camera packet. Uh, telling it to. Ah, okay. I gotta send it back with their own ID. Okay, got it. Spectating themselves. Um, Here I can actually use the proper constructor without any reflection because um, what's going on here? Oh, yeah, yeah, after everything's done, uh, which is, you know, with this delay, I'm just going to send them a packet to spectate themselves again. That should do the trick. Maybe I'll also just destroy them, yeah. Uh, what is the packet to remove a player? Packet play out entity destroy. And then we're gonna... It's interesting, like I'm not actually teaching you guys all that much in this um, video, uh, in this stream. This is all just really basic code and it's not even beautiful. Um, I feel like I got a lot that I can teach people, but not not like this. We're not even designing any code here. Um, but it's still a lot of fun. Is it enough to destroy them or do I need to um I probably also gotta remove it from the player list. Mm-hmm. Do I still have the player data lying around as a variable? Yeah, fake player info data.
And I probably got to even create it again because it's an inner class of the wrong um, object otherwise because, you know, it's an inner class, so I probably got to recreate it. It's not going to take any chances here. Good work. I'm going to clean this up later. I'm going to clean all of this up later. Uh, like, actually, actually. Okay, so now we're despawning it, but I still gotta um, see how I can change the player's uh, rotation. Huh. No, this just teleports the player themselves. Entity look packet changes the vertical rotation. It's the entity look packet. There is no entity look packet. Why are you telling me about an entity look packet, but it doesn't exist? Oh man, why you gotta do me like that? Hmm. I'm still actually teleporting the player. That may also be a reason why I why everything was messed up like that. Uh, I'm just gonna not do that for a second and see what happens. <laughs> um, well, bear. Should probably remember the game mode that the player was in. See, again, instead of get game mode, which is the getter function, I can just do property access syntax because that's the power of Kotlin. Um, thanks, Square. Me too. That's the, that's the amazing thing. Kotlin is so good. Just love it so much. Best programming language I've ever used, hands down. So let's hope that this kind of works now. <laughs> Team Stark. Yep.
Okay, so indeed, the pitch is actually changed. Um, but I gotta send the extra packet. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not bugged anymore. That's pretty dope. Wait, packet payout into to destroy. Oh, it natively creates an array of integer instead of an array of int, which is a problem. Um, uh, so the fake player is currently just not despawned, I guess. Um, I'm going to take care of that at another time because now I only want to uh, send the additional head rotation packet. I don't understand why Minecraft needs you to um I don't understand why Minecraft needs you to do this separately but uh yo random guy no I am giving it an array however it is an array of java lang dot integer instead of just int you know the difference is uh in the primitive type oh wow okay thanks Yane. um Wow, I didn't see that this one actually has a has a useful constructor. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. By the way, um, your formula earlier would have worked, I think. But um, not sure if you saw it. Uh, this is what I ended up using. I, I was determining the next segment first. Int array of could work, um, but... I'm not sure. I don't think it's like that's one downside of Kotlin interacting with native Java types such as int and byte. Uh, it's going to be li uh, primitives. I mean, that's always kind of tricky. Um, all right. So wait, what was I doing? Yeah, I was trying. Uh, that was the last thing I wanted to do for today. Before I'm going to head out because I think we have made a lot of progress at that point. And also because I got to go play some cool billiard, you know. Is it called billiard in English? I don't know. It's what we call it in Germany. Yeah, we're we're gonna get picked up uh, at twenty to eight. Marek, so it's gonna be 20 more minutes until we gotta go. Don't worry, we got time. <laughs> yeah, of course I'm German. German guy. Pretty proud of the fact that I don't really have an accent. I worked pretty hard on getting rid of it. Um, Alright. Gotta do the angle thing again. All right, this should now give us some smooth ace camera movements. Greetings uh, to Denmark. I like to smoke um, a Danish uh, pipe tobacco nice when I like to smoke my pipe. English is nice as well, though. They're both pretty dope, but Danish tobacco mixtures are delicious let's see Actually, this is a lot of fun. I may just do coding streams more often. This is pretty dope. Even though not that many people are watching, I don't, don't really, doesn't really bother me. And maybe it's going to grow, you know? 
maybe it's going to grow. So now, the moment of truth, baby. Moment of truth. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go full screen for this one. You better not fail me now. Okay. All right. All right. It's not as smooth as I as I think it can be. I think it can be smoother if we use the relative teleportation packet. Um Let's see. Yeah, it's shaking a little bit. It's not supposed to do that. I don't understand why it does that. Um Let's see. I'm just going to try switching to the relative packets. I don't remember if I streamed the pixel time development. Maybe I did. I did stream a bit before, but it's been a long, long time. What is this? What are these values here? So this is a short value. Mm. Uh, probably the other way around. I'm just going to be copy pasting this. Now, is this also relative? Probably. Uh, so it's the delta. But what are G, H, and I? What are the G, H, and I? What? Ah, here we go. Okay, so it's encoded specially.
I always like to use the expression body syntax instead of using curly brackets whenever it's a one-liner. Just kind of nice. Okay. Nope, this is just a new angle. Okay, not no delta here. No delta here, according to the wiki, you can see. Look, but this needs to be... I don't know if you could also write it differently. I don't have the time to think about it right now because I gotta go soon, sorry. <laughs> um, on ground, uh, no, they're not on ground. Okay, well, this is all of those that are being used by the rel entity move look packet. So we've set them all. The other variables don't seem to be used. Like this architecture on Mojang's end is highly questionable. Um, You probably can, Emre. Thinking about it, you probably can write it as that. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe you would do it differently if you're working with smaller data types to prevent overflows um, in the delta or something. I don't know. That probably doesn't make all that much sense. So this is the final test. After this, I'm uh, finna bounce. But... I think we got pretty far, got pretty far. Let's just hope that this, uh, these relative packets uh, also work. Uh, no. using the wrong array, of course. Using the wrong list, I mean, to get the point. That's what you get for having one huge function that does a lot of stuff, because um, you're going to run out of variable names, and you're going to have clashes, such as here. I mean, this is shadowing the other name, of the one on the outer scope. It's not ideal. So um, usually, I'm, I'm definitely going to refactor this into multiple functions later. And I am also going to comment this more um, when I have the time, which is like literally any time. Like there's no excuse for me, except for now, because I want to get stuff done. So, okay, let's try this again. Por favor, let me in. Yeah, I'm most definitely going to be streaming uh, further development of this, 100%. And I'm again, I'm going to announce it on my Twitter, at FreshPixel. And we're going to be seeing. All right. It's still a bit jank, a bit janky. I don't understand exactly why. 
but this is our fake player that we're spectating and i'm going to give the armor stand uh slash area effect cloud uh, a try next time which is what i used for um mcc i just wanted to give this a shot um but the problem is that for uh, when you're riding an entity you still gotta change the player's um head rotation with an entity look at packet which you can only do every 20 uh, seconds so maybe it's not even possible to do this any smoother however is the pitch rounded let's see i don't think so no it's not the values are not rounded what do you mean um uh, adrian you think that the fake player should be flying i'm gonna be trying that out next time but for now i gotta leave because we are leaving in 10 minutes thank you very much everybody for your time i really appreciate it um follow me on twitter to know when i'm streaming next but i'm probably also going to be announcing it on this youtube channel like i did here uh, a day in advance really really thankful for everybody who tuned in um i'm going to be committing the code uh later um to github when i come back maybe tomorrow um but yeah yes where you can for spectate an entity that's what we did with the camera packet here um see packet playout camera telling it which entity to spectate um yeah anyway auf wiedersehen as we say in germany thank you very much and uh, see you next time goodbye